All right, hey guys. Uh, happy, it's hump day today when I'm making this, so happy hump day. Um, hope you had a good Wednesday. All right, so today we're doing unit two, lecture five, the last unit, okay? So it's pages 13 and 14, it's about the electoral college, all right? So the electoral college, I know it's a confusing concept, all right? Um, but let's think about it in this way. The framers, as we've seen, don't entirely trust the masses and for a variety of reasons that we talked about already this year, right? So that transcends or goes into the Electoral College. So the Electoral College was originally designed as this kind of compromise at the Constitutional Convention. There were people at the Convention that wanted the, the masses to choose the President and there were people that wanted Congress to choose the President, all right? And so the kind of compromise is somewhere in between at the Electoral College. So the Electoral College, as originally designed, not how it works today, but as originally designed, is you and I would choose electors, right? And these people would run to be an elector for their state. And we were basically choosing them to go choose the president for us. They kind of had the freedom to choose the presidential candidate that they desired, all right? Um, the idea, again, is like a representative democracy or a filter what the masses desire, but through, you know, an informed, educated, rational individual that would choose the best person to be the president. At least that's the idea behind it, okay? So the old electoral college, we would vote for people who would vote for the president. They were called electors, right? All right, so now it's a little bit different today, okay? So let's first of all think about how many electoral votes exist, all right? There's 538 electoral votes. That's because each state gets the same amount of members they have in the Senate and the members in the House are the number of electoral votes they have. So there's 435 seats in the House, so there's 435 electoral votes. There's 100 um, Senate seats, so that makes 535, right? And then there's three more, 538 total, because the District of Columbia gets three on the, uh, because of the 23rd Amendment, all right? So 538 total, right? Uh, the minimum number that a state can have is three. Think of those states when we looked at the uh, congressional district maps the other day. Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, those are states that only have one member in the House, therefore they have one House seat, but every state has two senators, so three. All right? California has 55, Nevada has six, right? Okay, good. Now, here's the deal. Um, you and I, well, let's think about this first of all. Nowadays, the electors do whatever the popular vote in the state tells them to do. All right? And the electors are chosen by the party. So the Republicans will choose electors. We have Nevada has six, so the Republicans will choose six electors. The Democrats will choose six electors. And they're waiting on the side for the election to happen, okay? Now, you and I go to the ballot box on the day of the presidential election. We cast a popular vote, right? The masses cast a popular vote for the candidate that we'd like, all right? And now, According to our winner-take-all system, the candidate that has the most popular votes is awarded all of the electoral votes from Nevada, right? Okay, now you're going to bump into a word now, plurality. Plurality means the most votes, but not a majority. A majority means more than 50%, all right? We'll get into super majorities later, like two-thirds, three-fifths, etc. So, if a candidate gets the most votes in a state, the most popular votes, they get all of our state's electoral votes for now. All right? Now, the idea is um, candidates will then concentrate on states they think they can win. Candidates will focus on big swing states that have a lot of electoral votes, right? A swing state is one that could swing either Democratic or Republican. Nevada is a quintessential swing state, all right? Um, whereas California and, say, Texas are both solidly Republican and solidly Democrat, all right? Okay, now, here's the deal. We cast our popular vote in November, yes? Okay, so remember those six electors in Nevada waiting on the side, and this is happening in every state. In December, I think we said December 15th, the electors go cast their electoral ballots at the state capitol. So, we have six electors waiting. Let's say the Republicans win the popular vote in Nevada. Six electors from the Republican Party will go down to Carson and cast their electoral votes. 
if the Democrats had won, those six Democrats go and cast their electoral votes. Yeah? Okay. Now, what you need to win the electoral college, the electoral vote, and become president is 270. The Constitution says that you must have 50, more than 50% of the electoral vote to become the president. 270 is more than 50% of 538. All right? All right. Now, um, what if nobody gets a majority of electoral votes? All right? And the framers, again, thought that we would have multiple parties and therefore, you know, people wouldn't get a majority of electoral votes all the time. So the first thing, if nobody gets 270, the magic number, right, 50%, over 50%, it goes to the House, right? And it's there that the House will choose from the top three candidates. Now, the deal is, is remember, California had 55 electoral votes. Nevada had six. But if it goes to the House because nobody gets a majority of the electoral votes, each state has one vote. So therefore, if there's 50 states, right, I guess 51 if we include D.C., whoever gets, right, just over, uh, whoever gets, what, 26, right, 26 votes is the president, all right, 26 electoral votes, all right, each state has one vote, all right, and this has been done twice, 1800 and 1824, but it hasn't been done since. All right, so let's think about that really quickly. You and I go cast a popular vote in November, all right, whoever wins that popular vote is awarded those electoral votes, but it's not official until the electors go cast their electoral ballot in December at the state capitol. Then, right in January, they will formally count the electoral votes. They'll get them in the mail, however they send them to D.C. They'll count them on the House floor. They'll officially count the electoral votes, all right? Now, um, and then whoever gets the 270, president. And then inauguration day is January 20th, right? Okay. So you have to get a majority of the electoral votes to win the presidency. That's what the Constitution says, all right? The Constitution is kind of silent about awarding those to a candidate. All right, so now let's look at some criticisms of this, all right? A president can be elected with a plurality rather than a majority of the popular vote, all right? So again, all that means is, and we're going to look at some data in class to simplify that for you, all right? You'll see it. but. The plurality means the most votes that's not a majority, right? So just if there's three candidates, candidate A gets 33%, candidate B gets 25%, candidate C gets 20%, candidate A can win a state's popular vote with 33%. Now that would demand that there's a third party taking from the two parties, right? Okay. Now, um, the idea here, all right, of a minority president. Now, all I want you to do right now, because I'm going to show you data in class, a minority president is a president that wins the electoral vote, gets 270, but loses the popular vote. All right? The quick explanation for that is here's the deal. We have 50 separate elections for the president. Nevada cast their popular vote, California cast their popular vote, Rhode Island, Texas, and so on. And all that matters in awarding those electoral votes from the state is that state's popular vote. Right? And then they're awarded electoral votes. All right? We'll deal with that when we get in class. There's 50 separate elections, though. Okay? Now, this idea, this criticism of faithless electors. So remember those six electors the Republicans chose, those six electors that the Democrats chose. Technically, there's no federal law that when they go to cast their vote that they have to follow the popular vote. But here's the deal. Republicans wouldn't choose somebody that's going to vote for the Democratic guy, or Democrats wouldn't choose somebody that would vote for the Republican guy. So generally, that's not a problem. It's happened a couple times, but it's potential. All right? Now, also look at this representation. Small states are overrepresented, right? Wyoming has 500,000 people, but three electoral votes, which is about 166,000 people per vote. However, California has 33 million. Now, we know that's up, all right? and 55 electoral votes, which is one vote per 600,000, right? So in some, in, in essence, in the Electoral College, Wyoming is overrepresented when you compare it to Texas. I'm sorry, California, all right? But again, it's unlikely to change because you have to amend the Constitution to change the electoral votes, all right? Now, the other thing is small states are ridiculously overrepresented if it goes to the House, if there's nobody gets the magic number of 270, right? Because then... 
you would have Wyoming and California both having one vote for the presidency in the electoral votes. All right? Um, another thing is it inhibits third parties. This winner-take-all system really inhibits third parties, right? Because the idea is it's whoever gets the most votes, either plurality or majority, wins those electoral votes. So we saw Ross Perot, right, in 1992, he got 19 percent of the popular votes of the entire country, right? A lot of votes. But he did not get a single electoral vote because in no state was he ever the leader in popular votes. So some people are going to argue that he had a ton of votes. 19% of the voting age population is millions of people voted for Ross Perot, but he walked away zero electorally. All right? Okay. Those are our criticisms. Now, look at some alternatives, right? Why don't we change this? Now, first of all, direct election. You count all the popular votes, and the guy with the most popular votes gets the presidency. All right? So the no dividing the states among electoral votes is just simply popular vote, whoever gets the most popular votes gets the presidency, all right? Now, or a district system. Now, remember this, okay, if we look at California, California in the big urban areas is very democratic, but in the rural counties, rural districts, it's, it can be Republican and conservative, right? But what happens because the winner-take-all system is California always goes Democratic, all 55 end up going to the Democratic candidate, except for Ronald Reagan, all right? So, some people say do the district system. So all you'll do is you'll take the 53 congressional districts in California, count the popular vote in each district separately, right, because they each represent one electoral vote, and award the electoral vote to the candidate that wins. So then maybe you have regions that are kind of conservative, they could actually get an electoral vote to a Republican candidate, all right? Um, and then the two that are left over from the Senate for the whole state, whoever won the entire statewide popular vote will get those two Senate electoral votes. All right, now, a proportional system, right? This is interesting. Award electoral votes based upon the proportion of vote people get. So if you get 33% of the vote, you get 33% of the electoral votes. Now, that would probably encourage third parties, and therefore, no, people may not get a majority of electoral votes, 270, and it would send it to the House a lot. All right. Now, the other thing is, if we're worried about faithless electors, keep the electoral votes, but don't worry about the electors. Abolish them. All right. That's not a huge issue, but it could be. All right. Now, one of the things is, why has the Electoral College not gone away? Tradition. Right? Tradition. All right. Plus, you know, um, it's hard to amend the Constitution if you want to get rid of it, and that's what you would have to do. All right. Small states love it because